At this point, we're ready to take the customer support application and push it out to Windows Azure. When hosting a web application in Windows Azure, you have two choices. You can either use Platform as a Service and Cloud Services, or you can use Windows Azure websites. Because we don't want to make a lot of modifications to our website to integrate better with Windows Azure, we're going to use a Windows Azure website. To create that Windows Azure website, you click on this Create a Website button, which then allows you to specify the URL for your website. And here we're going to call the website Freeston Customer Support. And we also can pick the region that our website's going to run in. Normally, I would put this in the West US region. However, because Windows Azure websites are in preview as I'm recording this, I can only choose to put this in one region, the Eastern US region. Later on, I expect that Windows Azure websites will be available globally, and so this region dropdown will give you more options. We then tell Windows Azure to go ahead and create the website, and in a few seconds, our website will be ready for us. Once the Windows Azure website is available, we can go and check out some things about the website itself. You get information about its usage. You can see how long it's been running, how much data has been transferred in and out, how much space it's using, and so on. Windows Azure websites do also provide the ability to do custom DNS entries. If I was to go over to the Configure tab, I'd be able to go ahead and configure domain names. In order to do that, though, you have to scale your site to shared or reserved mode. Shared or reserved mode basically goes from a free tier to a paid tier. So I could either choose to be shared, where I might be sitting as one of many instances, but I'm paying for the bandwidth so I get a little better usage, or I could actually reserve an extra small instance for myself. And the shared sizes actually go from small, medium, large. So if I want this thing to be the easy deployment that I have in a regular IIS website, but I want to host in Windows Azure, this would be the route I want to go. And then once I set this up, I can go ahead and configure DNS entries as well. For the time being, though, we'll stay at the free, at the free level. The next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go ahead and configure the Windows Azure Access Control Service to accept tokens for the correct realm. So if we go ahead here, we know that notice that our site URL is no longer localhost, obviously. It's going to be this URL instead. So we're going to take that and I'm going to go over to my relying party applications and I'm going to change the application name here from localhost slash customer support to this URL instead. And we'll do the same thing for the return URL that you need to go over to freeston customer support.azurewebsites.net. And we'll click on save. Once this part is done, we now need to change the setting in our application as well for the, for the security settings. So I'm going to go in here to my configuration file. And I'm going to see here that I have a number of places where I have the string localhost slash customer support. And we're just going to do a, a search and replace on that string with this one. So we replace one, two, three spots. And that should all be all right. We can save this. One more thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to update some configuration information. I'm first going to show you what the bug is, and then I'll show you how to fix it. Before we get to fixing the bug, though, let's go back to Windows Azure Websites. And the next thing I need to do is I need to be able to deploy this application. So I need some information about how do I deploy the darn thing. I'm going to download this publishing profile and save it to my machine. Once it's saved, I'm then going to go over to Visual Studio. I'm going to go to the Solution Explorer, and I'm going to right-click on Customer Support and say I want to publish. Now, the publish settings here, we've got something set up. What I want to do instead is I want to import the settings from somewhere else. So I go up here to the profile part, and I say I want to import. And we'll pick the freesta-customersupport.azurewebsites.net publish settings. We're going to open that. Now all the information is stored here. I can then say, you know, verify that everything looks okay. And then I click on publish just like I would normally. What this is going to do is it's going to take the application, push it out to the website, and now it will be hosted in Windows Azure. When everything is done here, the other thing I'm going to expect to see is that I'm going to bring up Windows Internet Explorer and it's going to show me the website. Now, as I mentioned before, something's going to happen here that we don't expect. So let's first log into freeson.com.
and it comes up and says there's a runtime error. It suggests that I take the custom error modes and turn that off. So let's copy this configuration here and see what's actually going wrong on our website, and then we'll redeploy again. And again, I know exactly why this is going wrong. I'm just recording this so that you can also see this because you're going to have the same type of error when you first deploy. We're going to save this. We'll now be able to see what the custom, what the error was. So we go back here, we say publish. I publish again. This is going to push up a lot faster this time. Once it's, the push is done, we're going to bring up the website. Again, I log in. Because I'd already logged in, it was able to authenticate me, and now I get this thing saying the data protection operation was unsuccessful. The reason why this is happening is because of this little bit of information over here. Load user profile in the application pool for anything running in Windows Azure websites is always set to false. You don't load the user profile. As a result, what's happening is the part of the Windows Identity Framework that decrypts the token is unable to do so because it needs to use a data protection API. The data protection API needs to run under some user. Because it's not running under some user, we run into this error. I contacted the Windows Azure Websites team and they said, oh yes, we know exactly what you're talking about and we have a fix for it. If I go down here into my service.identity model section, there's an identity configuration section and I need to add a little bit of config. You'll get this configuration when you download the actual demo code. Important bit here is that what you need to do is you need to remove the, so the session security token handler. The session security token handler runs as the current user session and tries to do the decryption there in the session. What you need to have happen instead is you need the machine key session security token handler, which runs as the machine it itself under that identity. In that case, then, there is a user profile that can be loaded and the data protection APIs can execute. We make this last change, deploy our application out to Windows Azure, and what we should see happen this time is everything should be working. Again, I log in. I've already done the login handshake back and forth, so I'm going to get an authentication token, which puts me back at Windows Azure websites, and now here I am running out in the cloud with my application, and everything should still be working, so I should be able to go ahead look up information by my email address. This then went ahead, was able to contact the service running in my data center to get information about what orders I have. I can then look up the orders for this person. I can get details on this last one. And I can do some integration, which it's now going to talk, talk to the database that's running in Windows Azure to find out how many returns I've already done. All this information is being done. It's all working the application is currently running Windows Azure, and this whole thing only took a few minutes to handle.